So what if I told you to show me every single complex number that exists? How would you represent that? Well, here's how I'd represent it. Just like this. What you're looking at is a sketch of the set of complex numbers. We're on an argand diagram, we shade in everything, and we say this is all of the complex numbers. Now obviously, arrows in this direction, arrows in this direction, that means it goes on forever and ever and ever. So that's if you're just sketching every single complex number that exists. But in this video, we're going to be sketching subsets of complex numbers. We're going to be choosing a region of complex numbers or some complex numbers that um, meet some sort of condition. All right, let's take a look. So we're going to jump straight into questions. Now, this says the set of all Z such that their real components are equal to 6. Now, I just want to dive into that terminology just for a second. Whenever you see this, it means the set of all Z such that dot, 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 and then we've got our condition sitting in here. And our condition here is the set of all Z such that their real components are equal to 6. Now, examples of complex numbers that meet this criteria are Z equals 6 plus 3i, 6 minus 2i, 6 plus 1000i, and just 6, or 6 plus 0i. Um, now, I can keep listing them off, but that's going to take forever. Instead, I can show it graphically. On my Argand diagram, it's just a vertical line, right? Because 6 plus 3i would be like here, 6 plus 3i, and 6 minus 2i would be down here somewhere, and 6 plus 1000i would be way up here, and just plain old 6 or 6 plus 0i would be right there. And we're showing all of them just by drawing in that line. Now we can say that this is the set of all points meeting the condition that's been set out, and this is sometimes called the locus. So if someone asks you to find the locus or sketch the locus, they're asking you to do something like this. Now I'm just going to change this question slightly and we'll see how the sketch changes slightly. If we go from being equals to greater than, it says uh, the set of all z such that their real components are greater than 6. And we can show that by doing two things. First, we would need to shade in this section here, right? These are all the complex numbers greater than 6. But this says greater than 6. So it can't include this line. So we show that by making that line a dotted or dashed line. Okay, so dashed line because it's greater than, and then greater than because it's on this side. If it was less than 6, obviously we would need to shade in this side. And if it was greater than or equal to, we would do exactly what we've done here, except our line needs to be solid again because it includes the line. All right, so a few different variations. Now, the questions were never going to stay that simple. Here's a more complicated one. And there's two ways that we can tackle, and that's algebraically or geometrically. Now, normally I lean towards geometric interpretations, but algebraically, let's look at that one first. Now, what this says is the set of all z such that the magnitude of z minus 1 is equal to 2. Now, z is a complex number, and that means that it can be uh, expressed as x plus yi. And when we do that, we get our first line of working here. Magnitude x plus yi minus 1 equals 2. Now, we know how to find the magnitude of a complex number. We square the real components, which is x and minus 1. Square the imaginary component, which is just y. And that's going to be equal to 2 if we square root it, right? We're just finding a distance. Okay, so what do we have? We have x minus 1 squared plus y squared equals 2 squared. That looks familiar. We know what that looks like. That's a circle. That's a circle passing through uh, this point here, 1, or oh, sorry, having a center at 1 and a radius of 2. And that's it. That's what I need. Uh, this circle here uh, is the subset of Z that meets this condition. Okay, so I've worked through that algebraically and I've gotten that picture. You can also think about it geometrically. Okay, so what do I mean by think about it geometrically? Well, you can kind of avoid this working here and puzzle it out. So think. If I've got the magnitude between two complex numbers, that is the distance between their points on an Argand diagram. Okay, you can 
you can come up with that, you can figure that out. But that's what that is. It's the distance between two complex numbers. Now, in this one, we know what one of the complex numbers is. It's the number one, positive one. And you might be thinking, wait, negative one? No, no, no. If we're subtracting two and finding the magnitude, then that's the distance between this bit here. And that one, in this case, is positive one. Okay, so the distance between, in this case, whatever that was, z and positive 1, because of what I just said, must be equal to 2. Now, what do you get if you're mapping all of the points on an argand diagram where the distances between the point and just the number 1 is equal to 2, you get a circle. Okay, uh, that's the geometric interpretation of it. I really think that this is probably a better way of working and then sketching whatever drawing you have. But if you can think in two ways, obviously you can check your answer against itself. Now I must say that there are a few variations of this question. So it could be not equal to, it could be less than. And that means the distance between z and positive 1 is less than 2. And if the distance is less than 2, that means we're inside the circle. All right. And because it's less than, the circle wouldn't look like that. The circle would be a dotted circle because it's not including the circle. If I move this sign and turn it around, we're saying the distance between z and positive 1 is greater than 2. And if that were the case, we'd be sketching outside of the circle. Uh, and again, we would have this dotted line because it's greater than, not equal to. If it was greater than and equal to, we'd be sketching outside of the circle and our circle would be whole again. Now we can continue on here. This looks pretty intimidating. The set of all z such that the magnitude of z minus 2 is equal to the magnitude of z minus 1 plus i. Now again, we can do this algebraically by understanding that z and z, they're the same z there. We can express those as x plus yi. And once we've done that, we can find the magnitude of this and the magnitude of that. So we've got magnitudes here. Be careful. I just had to group real components. I had to group imaginary components here, y minus 1, 1i, one which is 1. All right, I can square both sides now, and then I can sort of uh, expand group-like terms, etc., etc., etc. So once we've done that, we can uh, get rid of some stuff. We can see x squared, x squared, y squared, y squared, uh, and then we can narrow this down and see where we end up. And we eventually end up at y equals x minus 1, uh, which on an argand diagram, it's going to be pretty obvious, we're going to have here negative 1. We're going to have a linear equation with a gradient of 1. And things lying on that line are going to be our answer. Now, I'll leave you to figure out the greater than or less thans if it was here or if it was the other way. Uh, but you can see that it starts off pretty intimidating. But once you start working through it algebraically, no problems. Next up, we're going to look at a few different versions of this where the argument has some sort of condition. So this says that arg z is equal to pi on 3. So here, I'm not going to work algebraically here. We're just going to think geometrically. What does it mean? Well, for, some th for a complex number to have an, an argument of pi on 3, it means that it makes an angle of 60 degrees, or pi on 3, with the um, real axis. So anything lying on this line here has an argument of pi on 3, and I've sketched it. Now, you might be thinking, like, but what about going down in this direction? Well, things in that direction don't have an argument of pi on 3. They have an argument of negative 2 pi on 3, so they're not it. All right, that's fairly straightforward. Let's look at uh, another similar one. Now, this is another one where you're going to want to think uh, geometrically. Uh, the argument of a complex number plus 3 is equal to negative pi on 3. Well, first of all, just forget the plus 3 for a minute. If it was just the argument of a complex number equals negative pi on 3, well, that's pretty straightforward. 
we just lie on this line here, because that angle here is negative pi on 3. But it's not just the argument of z equals negative pi on 3, it's the argument of z plus 3. Now, we do the same thing that we do when we're seeing like plus 3 on any function. We're going to take that and move it 3 across. They're supposed to be parallel. Alright, that's negative pi on 3 there. This point here is negative 3. And any complex numbers lying on that are filling this condition. This is our locus for this condition. Now this inequality is really worth exploring, so let's pretend it's an equal sign for a second. If it was an equal sign for a second, we're looking for all the complex numbers with an argument of pi on 3. Okay, now let's think what complex numbers have an argument less than pi on 3. Well, there's probably one here, right? Because instead of being pi on 3, it's less than pi on 3. So anything in here has an argument less than pi on 3. But if a complex number were here, say right here, that argument is negative, negative, let's talk in degrees, negative 20 degrees. Negative is less than pi on 3, so yes, this would be included as well. Now, all negative arguments are all here like this. And so you end up with this strange sketch where it's all of that and then all the way around forever and ever and ever in that direction, forever and ever and ever in that direction. It's just this wedge of our, circ of our circle or of our plane that's not coloured in. So less than or equal to pi on 3. I can keep that solid because it's a less than or an equal to. One last one. Saving the best for last here, what we have is uh, a set of conditions that need to be met and another set of conditions that need to be met. So we need to consider this, we need to consider this, and we need to consider where they overlap. All right, so let's look at this one first. This says, um, this condition here says that the complex number has to have a magnitude between 2 and 4. All right, so if a complex number has a magnitude between 2 and 4, that means that it's... 2, 4, it's in this region of a circle, okay, so length of 2, no, length more than 4, no, can't be that either, uh, so it needs to be between these two. Now there's some complications here, it says uh, less than, alright, so this needs to be a dotted circle here because that one's not included, right? But this one is a, is a defined circle because it is included. Okay, what about our other one? Uh, Z needs to be, uh, or argument of Z needs to be between pi on 6 and pi on 3. Okay, pi on 6 is uh, 30 degrees. Uh, pi on 3 is 60 degrees. So now I can shade in, if I just consider this bit, I can shade in all of that, right? I can shade in all of it. But I need both of these conditions to be met. So I'm not shading in all of it, I'm just shading in the bit at which they overlap, which is this neat little section here. And that pink section is my answer to this question. Now, perhaps an interesting question, and a question that I've already answered, is taking that and flipping it around like that. If I do that, I'm not saying that and that needs to be met, I'm saying that or that needs to be met, in which case everything I've shaded is uh, valid. So this stuff, this stuff, and all of that stuff is valid, because that is true or that is true. Okay, um, we've covered a lot of ground here. Again, practice these, but really try to understand what's being asked of you, and then ask yourself, should I tackle this geometrically, or should I tackle this algebraically?